says in my life God will be glorified or come on and lift up the name of Jesus it says in my life be glorified be glorified do me a favor and just wave your hands oh in my be glorified, be glorified. I'm going to sing it one more time. Oh, in my life, be glorified, be glorified. Oh, in, in my life, be glorified. You help me sing in my life. Be glorified. Be glorified. Because you kept your promise. You said you'll never leave me nor forsake me. So I will continue to glorify your name. You give the glory, you get the praise, you take the honor. I just want to say thank you. You get the glory, all of my praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. I dare you say, You get the glory. You get the Take all of the honor. I just want to say thank you. You give the glory. All of my praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. Now lift your hands and say.
Just think on that one thing and think how God has blessed you over and over and over and over again. And I dare you to just marinate on how good God has been. I said in my life, be glorified, be glorified, oh, in my life, be glorified. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hand and worship as we lift your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift. I don't see your hands lifted and worship as we praise your holy name because you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one, no one like you. Because you deserve God is a glorified yes, God. Indeed. If you know that we serve a great God, I dare you to just love on him this morning and thank him for everything that he's done for you. Oh, come on and just worship. Oh, come on and worship your holy name. Oh, oh, oh. come on, give God some praise in this house. Worship, worship. 
worship, worship, worship his holy, his holy name. Come on, one more time. I, I know this is redundant, but we got to give God praise for the praise team, for the band, for the media team. Come on, wherever you are, just give God praise. Just give God every Sunday. They're setting the atmosphere for the word of God to go forward and for the people of God to be blessed. Yeah, I got I'm just run real quickly through this. Today is January the 24th and we're celebrating a historical moment in this United States of America. We now have a sister in the White House serving as vice president. Some of our mothers and mothers would have never imagined this time possible but we honor God that we are a part of a generation of history making. And as you know, every, every election, the president puts in what's called a 100-day plan. Well, the Greenhouse International Church has also started a 100-day plan of radical, check this out, radical faith giving back to the community. So I want to make sure everyone in this house today fill out a index card. Put your name, your phone number, cell number, your name, cell number, email address, because we're going to bless 21 families today with $200 toward their utilities. While you're waiting on stimulus check two or three, the greenhouse has been a stimulus to our community ever since pandemic started. And the first 100 days of 2021, we're talking about radical, radical, radical giving back to our community. I want them to play real quickly this video from this week. On Monday, Dr. Martin Luther King Day of Service, we had the honor of carrying four loads, 26 foot trailers, trucks, to Bastrop, Louisiana. I want you to drop in just for a second and join us real quickly. You can think of to refurnish someone's house to get them back on the right track. It's being loaded up right now as we speak. That's another way of doing ministry. They're not here physically in the greenhouse. They're out in the community getting stuff so the greenhouse can be a blessing to the community. This community, this community across this state and community across this country, we have a mandate. We're going to be a blessing. You're going to start seeing greenhouse trucks going all over the place, blessing the community. So this is the first in 2021. This is our first seed we're sowing outside of Greenspoint. And I, I think God is pleased. Give God some praise. Let me drop this real quickly. The first 100 days, we're now in day 24. We've already blessed 100 families with a full tank of gas right next door. Today, we will have 28 families we have blessed with $200 toward their utilities. You just saw the promo from Bastrop, Louisiana. Over 555 families were blessed on Monday. Come on, give God some praise. We took over 25 volunteers from the church and the community on a six-hour round trip, 12-hour trip, over 25 volunteers. Come on, give God some praise. And we're going to pre-announce today that in the month of February, we will bless 50 families with a $30 gift card to HEB to go grocery shop in the month of February. That's how we rock it here at the Greenhouse International Church, the first 100 days of radical, radical faith. They're going to drop this next video in real quickly. On yesterday, we had the privilege, Shante, where are you? Shante Deckard. Well, she's not my physical daughter, but everybody calls her my daughter, so I'm correcting because she's been helping her pastor, her big cousin, make sure this ministry goes forward. On yesterday, she joined me. We went across the community because every, check this out, every new resident in the Greenspoint community on Wednesday, we get a list of everybody who moved into our community. And then on Saturday, moving forward, we go knock on their door and welcome them to the Greenspoint community, invite them to the Greenhouse Church, and let them know that we're here to bless them and serve them in that new community. Run the clip real quickly. It's about 60 seconds. Wow, it was exciting. Today was our first day of going out in the community. We have a partnership with all the apartment complexes in Greenspoint. When someone moves into Greenspoint, we get their name, apartment number, and on Saturday, we go out and visit them, invite them to the church, welcome to our great Greenspoint community. She said, how was the experience this morning? It was an exciting experience to see the new residents in the Greenspoint community 
here in Greens Point. You guys, please come out and join us one Sunday at 10.30 a.m. at Greenhouse International Church. So you always saying, what can I do for my church? How can I use my time, talent, and treasure? Join the GO team. Every Saturday, we're going out to the community, meet new residents, invite them to the church, tell them about Jesus, and let them know Greens Point is a great place to live and to worship. If you are a first-time guest, we met you on yesterday. Won't you stand real quickly? We're not going to actually give you any speech. We want to see if anyone here from yesterday. Oh, praise God. Praise God. We met you. Praise God. Praise God. Now, all first-time guests, you are first-time guests in the, in the house. Please stand. Amen. Amen. Look at this. Look at this. Come on. Give God praise. Give God praise. All the first-time guests immediately after church, meet me next door at the gas station. I'm going to fill your tank up with gas just for being a first-time guest at the Greenhouse International Church. Also, make sure you fill out an index card. You'll be in the running for $200 toward your children. This next video, this song is for you. Y'all ready? Let's rock it. Oh, come on, stand on your feet, Greenhouse. Come on, Greenhouse, stand all over the building. Put your hand together. Come on, it's all right. Come on, stand on your feet. If you got two of them, stand on them. Everybody clap your hand. You say, everybody. Everybody clap your hand. Everybody clap your hand. Everybody clap your hand. Everybody clap your hand. Right now, put your hands together. Come on, we gonna have a praise party for a few minutes. Can we do that? Come on, y'all look real good out there. Come on, we gonna have a little fun with this song. Oh, one more time, real big. I'ma teach you the song. Hey, everybody, clap your hand. You say, everybody, clap everybody, clap your hand. Everybody, clap your hand. Everybody, clap your hand. Everybody, clap your hand.
stranger, but when you walk through those doors at 200 West Greens Road, the place you go to grow to reach your full potential, you are now a part of our spiritual extended family, like it or not, we are with you and you are with us. Come on, give God one more shout of praise. Before we turn it back over to the amazing ministry of music, let me do two more things, if you don't mind. And then we, we are, man, I am excited. I've said this phrase over and over again the last few days. I feel like a big old kid at Christmas time, and Christmas is every day in my life right now. I'm not being braggadocious, but I just love the fact the favor of God, the fall is all over me. And the Bible says, like priests, like people, so I can declare everybody connected to this crazy man of faith, everybody connected to this 200 West Greens Road. You are in a position to grow and reach your full potential. You don't have to be sad. You don't have to be mad you don't have to be broke you don't have to be dysfunctional you just grab hold to this word in matthew 9 29 because the bible says it shall happen according to your faith and if you release this kind of radical faith signs and wonders blessings and miracles will follow you all the day i don't want to start that out but i'm telling you in the right place at the right time you're in the right place at the right time Listen, Dr. Kim, where are you? Please stand. We want to give an open invitation. Put the fly up real quickly for the Grow the Growers Leadership and Ministerial Helps. Again, if you've been asking, what can I do to help my church grow? Now we have the answer. This Wednesday at 7 p.m., there will be a Zoom call giving you detailed information how how to plug in. Then we're going to have a workshop this Saturday for every leader, every potential leader, and everyone that wants to put their hands to work to grow the greenhouse to reach our full potential so we can help others. You've heard the announcements how we fed 1,200 people a day, how we fed over 5,000 a week and all of that crazy radical stuff we've been doing but we can only go farther when we have more people in the process of making the church go forward. This is an open invitation to anyone that desires to be a part of leadership or ministry help. Join us 7 p.m. on Zoom, and then join us this Saturday at 12 noon for the workshop. Dr. Kim will give you all the information. She'll show you how to Zoom in and all that good stuff. Come on, give God praise. If you want to be a part of the Saturday outreach, I'm not sending you on Saturdays. I'm going with you on Saturdays and knock on doors and welcome to New People Talk community. I'm not sending you. I'm going with you. If I don't have a funeral that Saturday, I'm going to be knocking on doors right along with you. See Shantae Decker to sign up for that. See Dr. Kim, if you want to be a part of the leadership, growing growers. I love that. Growing growers at the greenhouse. Now, before we get ready to enter into a period of giving, let me share with you real quickly. Let me share with you before we get ready to go into a period of giving. Well, actually, I'll do this after the giving, and then we will bring the praise team back up. We're getting ready to sow seed in the house. We're getting ready to sow seed. You know the Bible says, sow into good soil, good ground. It will come back into your life double, triple, quadruple, a hundredfold. I'm, I'm just trusting God so radically this season. I'm trusting God for everything. Everything depends on my faith, and I'm going to sow seed saying that I have radical faith. Today, I'm going to sow my seed, and then I'm going to challenge you to sow your seed. They're going to come back and get ready to sing the song. Before you do that, let me just share with you this. Every month, the ministry has a, no matter who shows up, pandemic, church closed, 
we have a $20,000 a month note, and we've been here now going on five years, four years. I forgot how many years, 2017 to the day. And God has been providing because of your faithfulness. God has been providing because of your commitment to honor this house so we can honor the quest and the request of God to be the hands, the feet, the legs, the arms of Jesus. If you're online right now, get ready to sow. You can text 77977 in the house or online. You can text your seed to 77977, greenhouse, all caps. I'm challenged. I'm holding in my hand a green envelope. This is a builder note envelope. We have two more Sundays, this Sunday, next Sunday. We're now 10,000 away from our monthly note, and I'm getting ready to sow another radical seed of faith, $2,340 from your pastor in the building note. Once again, we are leading because we are believing and trusting God. I'm not sowing like this to be braggadocious. I'm not trying to sow to impress anybody. I'm sowing to move the hand of God because we're going to buy the block this year in 2021. And the only way we'll get there is by sowing radical seeds. So I need 200 people at the $50 level to join me in the green envelope or 100 at $100 level to join me in the green envelope. We don't take a lot of time. If you're online in the house, grab your green envelope and sow a seed of $100 or $50. Let's knock out the rest of this $10,000 on this morning and then we're going to have our tithes and offering the men will come now we're going to have our tithes and offering and that's simply you're honoring god you're honoring your church with your seed with your financial seed you're sowing back into the ministry that constantly sows back in the people i can't speak for any other church or any other location but this church seven days a week has an extended hand giving back to the community. For a matter of fact, today we're going to bless 21 families. Make sure you fill out your index card. We're going to bless 21 families with $200 toward their utilities. If you're online, I'm going to figure out a way. We're going to have an online blessing too before it's over how you can be blessed by watching online. But today, 21 people in the house will receive a breaking, a blessing of $200 toward their utilities. Let's all stand wherever you are. Let's all stand. If you need an envelope, Brother Lenny, Brother Lenny runs all over the church giving out envelopes. White envelope, that's your tithing offering. Green envelope, that's your building note. And if you want to sew electronically, you can do so in the back. Brother David's team is in the back to sew electronically, online or in person. We have everything you need. They're going to post online how you can give. We, as we're getting ready to sing this song, won't you start giving radically? Won't you start? Let's knock out the $10,000 balance today, and then let's sow a radical seed with your tithe and offering. Let's move the hand of God on today. And don't these women with these chucks and pearls on, they look so great. Come on, give God praise for all the sisters in the house with their chucks and pearls on, all the brothers with your blazes and chucks on. Oh, what an awesome day to serve God. God on today. As they get ready to sing this song, you just bum rush the altar. Just bring your seed to the altar. Bum rush the giving machine in the back. If you're sowing online, start to do so right now. Green envelope, 100 or 50 or the best you can. We need 100, 200 people to join the movement this morning and everybody sow your tithes and offerings. Y'all ready? Let's go.
bless him. Oh, come on, boy. You serve a real good God. Make some noise in this house. Oh, come on, bless that name, that name, that name that heals, that name that delivers, that name that set free. Come on and make some noise in this house. Oh, come on and bless that name. Come on, bless that name. If he had done anything for you, come on and make some noise in this house. Oh, come on, if he woke you up this morning, come on, make some noise in this house. If he kept you covered during this pandemic, come on, make some noise. Noise. The Bible says, let everything that have breath bless him. Come on and praise that name right there. Come on, you ain't, some of you haven't clapped your hands since you walked in. Oh, come on, come on. Let me check the house real quick. Come on, come on. If you got a reason to bless him, clap your hands. Come on, if you don't feel like clapping, wave at me. Come on, that's it. That's it. Come on, somebody's clapping. Come on, that's it. Come on, stand all over this building. Come on and give God your right now praise. Oh, come on, y'all didn't have church. Y'all didn't come here to have church. We come on purpose to make the devil angry. Come on and make some noise in this house. Oh. Come on, how many can really sit there and say I'm blessed and highly favored? Oh, come on, come on. They said back in the day that I'm blessed and highly favored. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Make some Holy Ghost noise in this house. Come on, open up your mouth and bless him. Come on, I need to hear you. Open up your mouth.
Yes, indeed. We are blessed and highly favored. Y'all saw me wave my hands going crazy. It's time for us to bless some people. And I don't see nothing but empty buckets. And we, we want to make sure we, we blessing the people. Listen, real quickly, we're getting ready to do this. And First of all, let me again say to all of the women with their pearls and chucks on, just stand for a second. All of the women with their pearls and chucks on, just stand for a second. All the women, all the women in the house, even if you don't have pearls and chucks on, just stand. We want to just honor you and just tell you how beautiful you are right now. How beautiful you are right now. Come on, give God some praise for yourself. Come on, give God some praise for yourself. Listen, pastor, pastor, love you guys, and we're getting ready to just drop some blessings. We're doing 21 today, so you can, Joe, if you would just pull out about five or six, we'll start off before we began to preach. We'll bless about five and six, then we'll do five or six, do the sermon, and we'll finish it out at the end. Just we call your name, you, yeah, he's he taking his time, he ain't looking down, just however you got in your hand, just, when you hear your name, just shout, you getting ready to be blessed. <laughs> Erica Edwards, uh, Erica Edwards, amen, amen, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad. Tracy Montgomery, oh yes, I'm glad. But I'm saying I'm glad because these people have been around a long time sowing and serving, and I'm glad to be in a position to be a blessing to those who never gave up on the vision. Terry Harrison, Terry Harrison, amen, amen. Angela, Angela A. Archie, Angela Oh, shield, I'm tripping. Where you at, Ant? Amen, 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 amen. Tasha Hackett, Tasha Hackett. Amen, amen. I, I'm so enjoying this, being a blessing to the people. Sheree Jones, Sheree Jones. You in the house, Sheree Jones? Amen. You ain't got to come up. I got you. You got to come up. I got you. I got you. Amen. 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 Now, let's all stand where we are. Let's all stand where we are. Just put it in the bucket. We're going to just randomly go through. Bucket. Let's all stand where we are. Give a big up by now. It's a very unorthodox kind of church. We just do what we led to do. We just do what we led to do. I want to say today, this this. Women of Faith Rocking Their Pearls and Chucks was the vision and the idea of a young lady who celebrated her 55th birthday on today. And I want to just, she is the founder of Parents Against Predators, and she spends countless hours fighting for the safety of children in our community. And I want to give her her props on this morning. Is Sonia Parker in the house yet? Sonia Parker? Amen. Happy birthday to you, and thank God for all the work you do in the community, and thank God for your vision on today and for allowing us to take this vision and run with it. We thank God for you. Come on, wave your hands again. Wave your hand again. Amen. 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 Everything that we do for this community, she's always right there taking food to senior citizens, blessing abused women and their children. I, we just thank God for your commitment. And then I just got a text also that one of the, let me make sure I say it right, Pamela Johnson, she's also celebrating her birthday. She drove all the way out of town. She's a 40-plus model. Where you at, Pamela Johnson? Where you at? Where she at? Wave your hand. 40-plus, she, she all dressed up, 40-plus. This greenhouse is just drawing people from all over the place. Uh, and y'all, my apologies, I'm getting messages from Congresswoman Lee. She's been ready to drop by service. So we just thank God even for her presence as she's on her way to the greenhouse. Now, now, while you're standing, while you're standing, I want you to do me one big favor, and then I'm going to give you this sermon net that God has blessed me with. But if you were here on last week, you, you, you saw my emotional 
outbreak that God because a lot of members of my family was hit with COVID positive tests on last week, but on Sunday while we were preaching at 12, 15 or so, they got positive, I mean, excuse me, got negative results and my grandchildren and their mother was no longer dealing with this thing called COVID and I was just grateful to God. But today, I, 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 you know, I, I'm telling you how blessed of a season we're in, but the devil hears my, my words. So he keep attacking my family because he can't get to me. So you, you notice by now you have not heard that woman screaming yet. You have not seen a pretty face rocking chucks and pearls over on that side. Unfortunately, this week on Thursday, I know I'm breaking every, I'm breaking every HIPAA law that I've been, and I'm breaking all pastoral confidentiality, but it's a praying church. Co Pastor Sandra Decker is at home social distancing and self quarantine. On Thursday, she received a negative report that she has COVID. But her faith is strong. Her faith is strong. I, I immediately went, I, I get tested every week, and I immediately went and got a quick test, and mine came back negative. We give God praise. But, so I'm going to ask before I go into the word of God on this morning that all of the saints, all of the people who believe that it shall happen according to your faith, that we will begin to pray right now that co-pastor Sunday Decker will be healed quickly, that this is just God's way of giving us some rest because she tries to keep up with her crazy husband who don't know how to rest. So let's just pray. This is God's way of giving her a few days of rest. So if you would join me right now and just begin in your own prayer language, let's begin just to pray for a speedy recovery of our first lady and co-pastor, Cedric. Now come open your mouth and just begin to declare, according to your faith, she is healed. According to your faith, it will not linger long. According to your faith, it shall not last. According to your faith, another supernatural praise report will break out according to to your faith. We're trusting God for healing now. We're trusting God to move in such a way that all things work together for the good. We're trusting God that co-pastor Sandra Deckard is resting well and doing well and this this is nothing but a, a temporary layoff so her body can be stronger and her vision can be more radical. We're just trusting God right now because we believe in God and there's nothing too hard for God. So we're declaring her next test will come back negative. We're declaring right now in the name of Jesus, she'll be back in a position to serving people at the church and the clinic. We're declaring that thing now to be so in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I didn't get her permission to share that, so I'm already sleeping in the other room already, so I can't do no worse than that. <laughs> bring the children. Bring the children. Amen, sister. We got you. We got you. Paul Randall. Paul Randall. Brother, we got you. We got you, brother. Sammy. Oh, I love this one right here. Sammy Brazil. She's is she in the house. Sammy Brazil. On her sick bed, she got to church. I'm, I'm blessed to be able to. So that was 7, that's 10. Y'all turn your Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter 9, verse 29. I pray you begin to share this message. For a matter of fact, all of those who are Facebook users, Facebook friendly, immediately after you read the text, if you would share on your personal page, let's take the gospel around the globe over and over again. I even see some people in their comments making that same statement. Share and take the gospel around the globe. But turn your Bibles now to the book of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 29. That media team, you guys are amazing. You, you, kudos to you guys. You are amazing. We're reading the first time from the God's Word translation, and then we'll jump down the same scripture in the New International Version. But I want to give you different references to this scripture that is transforming the life of your pastor. When I got hold to Matthew 9, 29 and put it in my spirit, it became a part of my core belief system. It has drastically changed my life. Matthew 9, 29 from God's word translation. He touched their eyes and said, 
what you have believed will be done for you. That's Jesus that's touching your eyes and telling them what you believed will be done for you. And then the same text in NIV says, Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, let it be done to you. Take your seats and let's have another conversation that in the year of 2021, we are prophetically declaring with sound boldness and accuracy, the year of 2021 shall be the year of faith manifestation. Your faith shall manifest in 2021 and those things you believe in God for, those things you have the faith for will manifest themselves in this year. You would not just dream about it, you would live it. Come on, give God some praise for manifested faith. We give God some praise. The Vice President of the United States of America had the faith to believe and on January the 20th, 2021, she became, check this, the first woman, the first black woman, the first woman of color to be sworn in as Vice President of the United States of America. She followed her belief system and she released her faith and it happened to her just as she believed and just as her faith applied. I have a question this morning. Do you have the faith to believe that you can bust a move to cause history to take place in your life? Do you believe you can be the first one in your family to cancel a generational curse? Do you believe you can be the first millionaire in your family? Do you believe your marriage can be the first marriage not to end up in divorce court? Do you believe your children are blessed going in and blessed coming out? Do you believe and have the faith you can overcome a hurdle, a stumbling block, a messed up, jacked up past, but do you have the belief system and the faith you can win in spite of it? Is there any woman in here and no matter what your baby daddy do or don't do, do you believe your children can rise up to a status of prosperity and live a life of peace? Is there a woman in this house that believes you would not have to go back to the jail or visit your son or your daughter? You would not have to go back into another courtroom unless your son or daughter is being sworn in as the judge over that courtroom. Is there anybody in this house with that kind of faith and that kind of belief system that in Green's Point, God will bless you beyond your imagination? Turn your Bibles, if you will, to the book of Mark, chapter 5. Jump down to verse number 34. Mm -hmm. The power of manifested faith. The power of manifested faith. Watch this. Very familiar text, but from a different angle. Mark 5 and 34 in the NIV. He, again, he is Jesus. The only he with any clout in this house is Jesus. So whenever you hear me refer to he, I'm talking about Jesus and not me or any male model, but Jesus. It's going to be Jesus that's going to turn Green's Point upside down. It's going to be Jesus that's going to restore the safety in Houston, Texas. It's going to be Jesus that's going to transform us to our rightful place. It's going to be Jesus that's going to bless your family out of this mess. The power of manifested faith. Mark 5 and 34, it reads, he said to her, and brothers, don't close your ears. The principle applies to all male and female. Because remember in the beginning when God created it all, he said, I created them in my image. Male and female. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. I love the way the contemporary English version puts it. Jesus said to the woman, you are now well because of your faith. May God give you peace. You are healed and you will no longer be in 
pain. I got I to gotta say it one more time from the New King James Version. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. So, so now let's drop this in real quickly. Because of your faith, you are blank. That blank will be based on your belief system and your level of faith. Because of your faith, you are blank. Faith has blank you. Oh, good God Almighty. Faith has blank you, and everybody's blank is different because everybody's blank be filled in according to your faith, according to what you believe in. If you're believing because of your faith, you are healed. If you are believing, faith has promoted you. If you are believing because of your faith, you are elevated. If you are believing, your faith has prospered you. Is there anybody in this house, male or female, young or old, is there anybody in this house and you believe God's getting ready to fill your blank up, but you are blessed going in and blessed coming out. Is there anybody here believing your blank is getting ready to be supernatural? Your blank is getting ready to be outstanding. Your blank is getting ready to turn your generation around. Your blank is getting ready to transform your family. Somebody holler poor no more, sick no more, depressed no more, angry no more, addicted no more, in bondage no more. My faith has set me free. My belief is there's nothing too hard for God and I'm going to ride the God wave all the way. Faith has made you, point to yourself, faith has made you blank. Faith has made you, according to God's word, faith has made you victorious. Oh, I dare you to have the boldness of saying it out loud, my faith has made me victorious, which means I get the victory over every situation. I get the victory in every situation. You might as well call my new nickname Victorious because I'm victorious in every arena. I'm victorious in every atmosphere. I am victorious. Faith has made you, I like when the word says, free from. Because you need to be set free. Faith has made you free. That woman was in bondage to a sickness, to a bleeding condition, but you've been in bondage to bad relationships. You've been in bondage to bad spending habits. You've been in bondage to addiction. You've been in bondage to a messed up family. You've been in bondage to the thoughts that's running through your mind. But today I'm declaring your faith has freed you from every negative place, every negative person, every negative situation, every negative pronunciation that has come out of your mouth, I dare you to holler right now, my faith has freed me from it. Are you glad you showed up? Are you glad you tuned in? Because your faith has made you successful everywhere you go. Your faith has made you successful because success comes according to your faith. Because with God, with God all things are possible. Let me slow. I want you to write this down. I want you to put this in your notes, text this, tweet this. This is, next statement is very powerful. With God, all things are possible for those who walk, live, speak, think, and move by faith in faith. If, if you're not walking, living, speaking, 
thinking and moving by faith, in faith, you're not qualified to be under the category of all things are possible because you just eliminated the possibility of you being successful. You eliminated the possibility of you being healed, delivered, and set free because Jesus says, you prevented me from doing great miracles in your city because of your lack of faith. It's not that Jesus not working, it's that your faith not working because if you have the My faith is so radical right now, I don't think anything is beyond the realm of possibility. If I can think it, I can achieve it. If I can dream it, I can have it. My faith is so crazy right now. Pastor Sandra, Mr. Howard, my faith frees me. Her faith gonna free her from Corona. Faith took the vice president from Howard University, a historical black college university in, watch this, look how God work, in Washington, D.C. So as a student in her undergrad studies, she often passed by the White House. Ooh, you, 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 you missed that, you missed that. And her faith took her from studying in D.C. now to serving in the White House in D.C. Don't tell me what faith can't do. But I got a question this morning. Where is your faith taking you? Do you have enough faith to get off Green's Road? Do you have enough faith to get out of the situation you're in? Where is your faith taking you? Are you going to spend your whole life looking at stuff but never achieving stuff? Are you going to keep running around the church talking about what you're going to do one day? Or are you stuck in that spiritual your mindset like the plantation Negro or when we die and get to heaven oh by and by no I don't want to buy and buy when I get to heaven I want to buy right now I want to buy my grandbaby or something I want to buy my wife or something I want to buy Green's Point or something I want to buy the block so I can get jobs for folks I want to buy the block so I can put people's lives back together again I want to buy the block to use the block as collateral to build senior citizens homes I want to buy the block to use the block as collateral to build a house for domestic women we have to live in fear no more i want to buy the block so i can save the block where is your faith taking you no 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 don't just shout about that think about that where is your faith taking you how long are you gonna claim a thing before you actually acquire a thing it's not that God is not doing it, but your faith is not being applied to a level for God to move you. This week, this week not only did we have the privilege of going to Louisiana doing that, but I had the honor, the distinct honor, as a new professional basketball league in the United States of America. Your pastor had the honor of being the opening press conference, and the owner of the team said, Pastor Deckard inspires me. And then, then on, on yesterday, the first round of tryouts, he tells the audience, that's my pastor. I'm going to his church. Because my faith has been released and it is drawing millionaires and billionaires in my presence to get a word that's coming out of my mouth. Do you have that kind of faith that folks that are ahead of you will look back to draw from you because your faith is getting ready to take you to another level you've never been to before? I dare somebody off in here. My faith is not based on what I see right now. My faith is based on when I came by my mother's birth canal, God had assignment, God had purpose, and he woke me up this morning on purpose, with purpose. Now my passion and my faith is colliding, and I'm going to pursue until success happens. That's what my faith is carrying me to a level of success I've never seen before. Does that sound like you? 
Yeah. Wow. Faith works everywhere. Let me say it again. Faith works everywhere. Watch this. Watch this. Let me break down pearls and chucks kind of faith. So now how this man going to pull pearls and chucks out the Bible? We got a radical pastor, but one that spends countless hours in the word to give God the freedom to speak to me in a unique, unusual way. So let me make pearls and chucks make sense in the faith realm. Turn your Bibles, uh-huh, turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 13, verse number 45 and 46, if you will. Turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 13, verse 45 and 46. If you have not shared this gospel yet, share it right now. Let the gospel go around the globe. If you have not sown a seed, sow one right now. Sow a radical seed in a radical place of faith and watch a radical return. Let's get back to the text. Matthew chapter 13, verse 45. Kudos to all my sisters across America, across the globe, that are rocking their pearls and chucks this morning. But let me put in a biblical sense. Again, verse 45, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. Uh, okay, this is just for the sisters right here. Uh, no brother, better not jump up. If you consider yourself a fine pearl, high five yourself right now. If you a fine pearl in the making, high five yourself right now. If you used to be a fine pearl, you're on your way back to being a fine pearl, high five yourself right now. Okay. When, that's why I stay in trouble. Verse 46, back to the text. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Watch this. The Bible is saying the pearl has such great value that the merchant invested everything he had to inquire the pearl. What that lets me know is the pearl is significant of great value. And if you are a sister rocking pearls this morning, if you don't have any physical pearls on, you are still a pearl, which means you have great value. Stop letting folks undervalue you. You have great value. Come on, sister. Say, I have great value because when God created you, he called you wonderful. When God created you, he said you were created in his image and ain't nothing shabby about God. You have great value, but stop letting folks shop with you at great value. Stop selling yourself cheap. The merchant had to sell everything he had to inquire the pearl. This season of Big Mac and fries won't be enough to you give your thighs. Oh, you, you didn't like that one, huh? Mm -hmm. A pearl, by definition, watch this, is a person or thing of great rarity and worth. Not only do you have great value, but you have great worth, and you are rare commodity. You, you, you're not just somebody somebody can pick up. You, you have rarity. It's something rare about you. You are special. You are distinct. And stop letting folks put you in a box of commonality. You are not common. You are rare. And if they don't see the rareness in you, they're not the one for you. If he don't see how rare you are, he's not the one for you. If the group you are hanging with don't see how rare you are, you hanging with the wrong group. You better get into a place not where you tolerate it, but where you celebrate it. You are rare, sister. When God created you, he did not make anybody like you. So stop trying to be like others. You were not created to be like others. You were created to be you, distinctly you, uniquely you, and not just sisters, but brother, ain't no other brother like you. That's why you think the way you think, respond the way you respond, and roll the way you roll. Stop trying to be fit in in a box. You were not born to be in a box. You are a box cutter. Open up and go and get what God has for you. Mm -hmm. I kept doing my biblical research, and I discovered in the Old and New Testament, 
that pearls represent wisdom gained through experience. Ooh, you missed that. Pearls represent wisdom that has been gained through experience. And who has not been through something that made you stronger, that made you wiser, that made you better? That's why you are a pearl. And this time, a pearl has no gender, male or female, because you are wiser because of your life experience. Instead of you putting your head down, your life experience has picked your head up. I dare you to shout right there, in spite of all I've been through, I'm wiser than ever before. I didn't like it when I was going through it, but now when I look back over it, I'm glad God let me go through it because it made me wiser. Some of the great attacks against my life did not kill me nor destroy me, but made me wiser because if that would have happened to me, I wouldn't be here right now. I thank God for every experience, the good, the bad, the ugly, the nasty, because every experience Experience gave me wisdom to not experience that thing ever again. Is there anybody here and you glad you don't look like what you went through? You glad you don't spill out the fire you've been through? Anybody glad the storms of life didn't take your life? Anybody glad for the pearl experience? It made you wiser. You won't go back to nothing like that ever again. You won't take that from no other Negro. That bad husband, that bad baby daddy, that bad girlfriend, that bad ex-wife, they gave you a learning experience you will never regret. They gave you a PhD how to come out of mess. Turn your Bibles, and I'm almost done. Turn your Bibles to Matthew. Are you being blessed? Mm-hmm. Matthew chapter 7, verse number 6. This is going to mess you up right here. Don't get mad at me. I'm just a messenger. And this applies for both male and female. Matthew 7 and 6 says, do not give dogs. Do not give dogs. Let me watch this, brothers. A dog is not just a male species. Because what I see on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, there are females who wake up, call themselves a bad female dog. They greet their sisters like, female dog, what's happening? So a dog is not just a male species in this text. So I'm not male bashing. I'm dog bashing. According to the word of God, do not give dogs what is sacred. That's why you're itching, you got fleas. <laughs> Ain't no shock can cure that. You got heartbreak. Can't no drink satisfy that. You got pain and misery and can't no swiss or sweet solve that. Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to the pigs. I told you a pearl meant that you were rare. A pearl meant that you were special. Special folks don't hang out in the pigs. The prodigal son came to his sister. I don't belong in a pig's pen. Let me get up out of here. Is there anybody in here and you glad you're no longer playing in the pig's pen? You grew up and realized I'm too good to be rolling around in the mud. If this all you got for me, holla, 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 holla. I'm a pearl. We don't grow. In mud. And as all he got or she got for you is some dirt, shake them off. Now, now, 
this Chuck Taylor basketball shoe, nicknamed Chucks. They were made popular in the hood. Oh, you missed that. A pearl represents the finest of finest, priceless, a pearl. A chuck was made for the hood. Ooh, watch this, watch this. That lets me know my fate works in Harlem, Greens Point, Compton, as well as Harvard, River Oaks, and sunny California. No matter where I am, if I have faith, I can work the faith. That's why the VP rocked the pearl to show you I'm special, I'm rare, I'm priceless, but I keep my chucks on to let you know where I come from. I'm straight out the hood, but that didn't stop me from getting to the White House. That didn't stop me from getting to my destination. I may be out the hood, but the hood ain't in me. When I bust a move with my pearls and chucks on, she says, I'm showing little girls in the hood everywhere. If you dream it, you can become it. If you release the faith, you can do it. Eight years ago, Barack Obama showed the black boy, you can get up and get to the White House. You can get up and run your house. You can be somebody if you have the audacity of faith. And eight years later, 12 years later, a black girl out the hood come to show you rock your pearls and your chucks. Many brands, many more expensive brands have come and gone, but the chucks are still rocking strong because your life experience made you hard enough to go through the storm, to go through recession. You went through Reaganomics. You went through. You went through all of that. You went through bushes in the White House. You went through a Trumpster in the White House. You went through racial tension in America. You lived in a time where the United States wasn't so united, yet you're still standing. Mama may have left you. Daddy may have left you. Your boo may have went boo on you, but you're still standing because you're like the Chuck Taylors. You passed the test of time. Your faith has kept you when Everybody else quit and gave up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The first time someone thought they were putting me down by saying, you pastor a bunch of hood folks, a bunch of hoolums and hooches. But I discovered that you can be hood and holy if you got undefeated faith. I can go anywhere with my credentials, but I love being the hood. Because the hood folks are the realest folks. I don't have to, you have to pretend by, if, if they don't like you, they just, you know, I don't like you. If they ain't with you, they just, I ain't with you. Them other folks pretend and put on massages and camouflage, but in the hood, we tell it straight, I'm hood and holy. If you want to find out which one I am right now, cross me the wrong way. In corporate America, you better be hooded, holy, because sometimes you got to let them know I'm from the hood. I ain't falling from the yokey doke. Pay me what I'm worth. Discount bargain season over. I went to that church in the hood and found my word. You can't shortchange me with your fake promises. If you ain't taking care of your babies, you can't lay with me another day of your life. When I get home, if you playing PlayStation with a 40, I'm giving you an eviction notice. Bozo, you got to get out of here. You stopping my bow ass from showing up. If that's all you can offer me is good sex, your season over. I need some good sis in this house. Did he say that? Okay. We, 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 we got to go. We got to go. Turn your Bibles. We got to go.
turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 26, verse 6 through 8, NIV. And we almost done. While Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster joy of very expensive perfume, which she poured on his head as he was reclining at the table. Verse 8, when disciples saw this, they were ignorant. They got mad, angry, upset. Why this waste, they asked. Let us pull from this real quickly before we get to the closing text. Notice Simon the leper was hosted at what we call get-together with some very important guests in attendance. Why is this important, preacher? Because the cultural standards said lepers were supposed to stay away from people, especially people of high class and status. The leper had been disqualified from sitting in the VIP section of the spot. But this leopard, who was supposed to stay away from people and practice social distancing for a lifetime, he said, I'm not going to follow their mandate because my faith in my belief system is, in spite of having leprosy, I'm still somebody. Lepers were looked down at and placed in a box with other disenfranchised people. But Simon the leper had the faith to live outside the box. Is there anybody in here and you have the faith to live outside the box? I know what they say you can't do. I know what they say what you can't become. But is there anybody in here having leprosy was a bad hand, was a bad deal. But Simon said in spite of a bad hand, a bad break, and a bad deal, I'm coming out this box, and I'm going to be somebody because I am somebody. Jump down to Luke. Same story. A different interpreter. Luke chapter 7, verse 37 through 50. Of course, I'm not going to read that all. When you go home, study it out. Luke chapter 7, verse 37 through 50. The same story is being shared. I'll just read a couple of verses, then we're going to bounce. A woman in that town who lived, check this, a sinful life, learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster joy of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair kissed them, and poured perfume on them. Jump down to verse 39. When the Pharisee who had invited Jesus saw this, he said to himself, like most of you church folks, if this man were a prophet, he would know who this touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Not that a leper call her a sinner. Don't judge folks that they had a different situation than you. But Jesus, dropped down to verse 40, Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. He got bold. Tell me then, teacher. He breaks down a parable and it concludes like this in verse 44. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? I came in your house. You took me for granted. She came in your house and worshiped me. Verse 48, then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say amongst themselves, who is this even forgive sins? And Jesus shut them all up in verse 50. Jesus says to the woman, your faith, hmm, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Peace means nothing broken, nothing missing. Jesus, your faith has saved you and you will leave here with nothing broken and nothing missing. Don't worry about what they saying. I said your sin has been forgiven. Go in peace. Peace. Let's break this down on the way out of here. This woman with a sinful past, I'm not going to ask the question, is there anybody here with a sinful past? I'll just wave my hands. 
This woman with a sinful past understood how amazing grace really is. Is there anybody and you really understand how amazing grace is? She may have been, some theologians said, this woman may have even been a woman caught in adultery and her life was saved by Jesus. You know that story, right? That woman was dropping it like it was hot with another woman's husband and they busted in and caught the two of them, but she was the only one about to be stoned to death. The man, they let him creep away and they were getting ready to stone the woman to death and Jesus shows up, bends down in the sand and starts to write all the names of those left behind and declare, let thee without sin cast the first stone. And the Bible says from the oldest to the youngest, they walked away. Why from the oldest to the youngest? Because the older they were, the more mess they had in their closet. So they realized if he start calling a roll, I better get up out of here before he start talking about my story. I better get up out of here. And that should be the mandate in 2021 when somebody bring you some mess and some gossip and some trash about somebody else. Paul is saying, now tell me about your story. Tell me about your junk first and how you really know they were doing that if you were not doing it with them. Don't tell me your interpretation about them. Let's have a conversation about your situation. That's how you cancel trash. That's how you cancel gossip. Shift it back to the gossiper. She had faith. This woman had faith to ignore the current fact that men didn't see her true value. If they don't see your true value, that just simply means they not the one for you. That's not the man for you. That's not the woman for you. That's not the job for you. That's not the church for you. That's not the spot. If they don't see your true value, don't dumb it down to meet their standards. You better bounce. She had faith. Ooh. She had faith to praise God in the midst of people trying to press her down in her past. That's why the theologians say she must have been the woman caught in adultery because they kept wanting to remind her that she's a sinful woman. But how can a sinful man talk about a sinful woman when the Bible says all A-L-L preacher, prophet, deacon, teacher, intercessor, the back row of the church and the front row of the church all A-L-L. You may have been here for a while. You may have just gotten here. But A-L-L, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Don't make the church house mistake of judging folks because they sin differently. Sin is sin. Thank God for grace. So the Bible says this woman start to praise God. She start to lift up her praise while folks were trying to press her down. Do you have the faith to praise God in the midst of folks trying to press you down, trying to use your path against you, trying to use what you've been through, maybe what you did, maybe what you didn't do, but whatever it is, it's in your yesterday. I dare you to give God some today praise. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. And while she's praising him, Jesus says to her, your faith, your faith has saved you. Now go, now go, now move, press forward, take one step in faith and another step in faith and walk in peace. Walk away from everything that tried to steal your joy and steal your peace. Walk, walk, walk by faith and go claim your victory. Go claim your healing. Go claim your deliverance. Go reclaim your joy. Claim your peace. Nothing broken. Nothing missing. 
I got to leave you right here before we bless some more folks and open this altar for new folks to join this ministry and partner with this ministry for us to pray not for you, but with you. But before we open the altar, let me say one more thing. Let me introduce you to next week's theme as we leave this woman in faith, praising God. Is there anybody here that can holler back at the preacher? Faith don't fail me now. Faith don't fail me now. Faith don't fail me now. I know what they're saying. I know what I've been through. I know where I'm at. But faith don't fail me now. It's my season. It's our season. And it shall be done according to my faith. So I declare on my way out of here. Faith don't fail me now. Faith don't bring me this far and leave me. Faith. Faith don't. Don't fail me. Don't fail me now. Faith don't. Don't fail me now. Faith. Don't. Y'all get ready. They getting ready to sing. An invitation song. Before they do, we're going to bless some more families. Let me get an invitation. If you're watching online, if you're in boxes, this is a message. I want to be a part of that crazy, radical, faith-based church. I want that to be my place where I reach my full potential. I'm ready to open this business. I'm ready to get this marriage right. I'm ready to get these. I'm ready to grow. And I'm ready to go in peace. If that's your story, inbox us. We want to welcome you to the greenhouse. The one, the one of Cornette. Where you at? Amen. Bless you. Lynn Bennett, bless you. Lynn Bennett, bless you. Lily M. Bob, Lily M. Bob, where you at? Lily M. Bob, you hear Lily M. Bob, bless you. Michelle, D. Sue, Michelle, bless you. You won, my sister. Miss T, is it Miss T in the house? Miss Miss T, Marie Williams, bless you, bless you. Count these, these count all these for me. Tell me where we at numerically. Count all, I got some more in my pocket. Count all those, see where we at. And you know, listen, as they get ready to come and sing this invitational song, listen, this is not lip service. I've dedicated my life to serving the people of God. Because God woke me up this morning on purpose, with a purpose, and that's to take the gospel of Jesus to every hood in America and across the globe so people can get up and live by faith, in faith, and reach their full potential. This is our local location, a place of faith. 200 West Greens Road exists because of radical faith. And what you see God doing here, he can do it in your house, in your space. And I want to be your pastor. My wife and I, after she want to be your first lady, your co-pastor. If you're here and you need a pastor, you need a church that will pray you through and teach you through to reach your full potential. If you're tired of being tired, male, female, young, old, black, white, rich, poor, I don't care where you come from, what you've been through, this is the place. You're in the right place at the right time. You just start walking down this aisle to give your life to Christ. First of all, you got to give your life to Christ and get baptized. Secondly, you need to join this church, be a part of this ministry. And third, if you need to pray with you, not for you, but with you, we will touch and agree that your faith will increase your belief system will cause everything you're dreaming for to become your reality. Won't you come now? Won't you come now? Down these aisles. Come. Connect with Jesus. Connect with the greenhouse. The place you go to grow. Reach your full potential. Or you come for prayer. Come, come now. Let's see this song. Come. Praise. Praise where you
will change your life. Come on now. There's room. Come on now. If you're ready to grow and reach your full potential, let this rival of faith this house take you to where you desire to go. Come on now. Wherever you are, come on now. Come on now. Just as you are, come on now. important things. If you want to be a part of the Growing the Growers at Greenhouse, please see Dr. Kim. Dr. Kim, where are you? Raise your hand again. See Dr. Kim. We got a Wednesday Zoom and a Saturday workshop, but you got to sign up. Growing the Growers. Become engaged and involved in the ministry of the Greenhouse. Also, if you want to join your pastor on Saturdays, Every Wednesday, we get a report of who moved to Greens Point. We go and meet and greet them on Saturday and take them gifts and invite them to the church. You'll be a part of that Go Green team. See Sister Shante Decker. Where you at, Shante? See Sister Shante. She'll sign you up. We're going to keep moving. We're going to move aggressively. We're going to win souls to Jesus. We, our mission is to get people to Jesus. Their life can be changed and they can reach their full potential. And we don't do it alone. We have partners all over this city blessing this ministry. I want to acknowledge one of our partners again. Sister Sabrina Lewis, Miss Black Texas, you would say, are you here? Sabrina Lewis, are you here? Come, come, come on down. Be sure to get the camera ready. This is Miss Black Texas, USA. Sabrina Lewis. She comes during the week in the warehouse working to bring supplies for senior citizens to the community. She doesn't let title or prestige stop her from being a servant of God. Won't you help her up? Be sure you got the camera? We want to present you as a community vision partner and thank you for all you do to make the greenhouse way a better way. We don't do it without you. We don't do it by ourselves, but we thank God for community vision partners and God bless you. And she drives all the way from Hempstead, Texas. She drives all from Hempstead, Texas throughout the week to work up here and to serve the people of God. Come on, give, give God some praise. Now, y'all know I'm, I'm, 
I got clear ministry and community vision, but my vision vision is all messed up. So is Anjanette Tipido here? Anjanette Tipido, is she here? She's not here. Okay. Now, I want to, our last seven, we just did 14. We have seven more to bless, and then we will close out this service in prayer. David Johnson, I'm loving today. David Johnson. David Johnson. That brother faithfully serves this ministry. Birthday on Sunday. I don't know what this means. They just put birthday on Sunday and put a phone number. I have no idea what that means. Now, the rules was name, cell phone number, and email. So whoever birthday on Sunday, Valentine's Day, you learn how to follow instructions. Oh, in the back. Oh, thank, thank you for looking out. You looked out for him, brother. Sister Barbara, I, Sister Barbara, you, you, Sister Barbara, my, my bad, my bad, you good, my bad, my, my, my bad, you good, you good, bless you, bless you. Leroy Reed, Leroy Reed, bless you. Kenneth Fisher, Kenneth, bless you, brother. So, Bob, you can't win twice. Here, 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 here. she can't win twice. Every time you put your name in there. Oh. Felicia Allen. She here, Felicia Allen. Bless, bless you, bless you. We're praying for your family. The one of hits. Amen. Bless you, bless you. The final one, number 21. John Allen. John Allen. Where you at, John? John Allen. John. Where? John, John Allen, John Allen. John, you already won one, one already, right? The, the $200 for utilities. You won last week, right? You didn't? Well, don't you like you're familiar, okay? Well, bless you, brother. You just won. That, that's 21, including the seven last week. That's 28 already that we're going to bless with $200 toward your utilities. On tomorrow, you'll be getting a phone call from my community partner. They'll be emailing you on how your $200 will be transferred over to your utility situation. So you're in good hands. Don't worry about it. Don't, don't start calling me. On tomorrow, we're going to contact you. Don't call me. We're going to contact you. But my words, my bun, you're good. Amen. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. If you know anyone who still has hoop dreams and desire to play in a professional paid basketball league, tell your sons to see pass. And not only is it a professional basketball league, it's the owner of the league is the first check this, and they'll be here in February. The only African-American female owner of a basketball league professionally. She's an AKA, and she's the owner of an entire basketball league. Come on, give God praise for that. I mean, sisters on the move this season. Brothers, y'all better get together. These sisters are learning their value. Then while you're standing, pray that you were blessed today. I'm already preparing for February. The sermon series will be entitled Push, Pursue Until Success Happens, undergirded by your faith. We will have amazing Black History Month here, amazing Black History Month, to prepare yourselves for it. Wednesday, make sure you're on Zoom. I wouldn't, I wouldn't miss out to find out what my church is up to next and how I can get involved. And then Saturday, change your plans, 12 noon from 12 to about 2. Get engaged in the process of being an active part of this church. I, I'm going to tell you, I need you. Because I am aggressively seeking the resources to buy the block. So I want to put the ministry in the hands of the people so God can release the, what we need to buy the block, to buy other blocks. Amen? So while, while you're standing, man, and keep praying for Pastor Sandra. Please keep praying for Pastor Sandra. Man, y'all look so wonderful. For sure, how many of you want? Five, six, seven? How many of you want? Eight of you. I need five females to go to the other side. For sure, going a quick interview on how this ministry has impacted your life, how today's experience was, and this a, a, a 60 second commentary on the Greenhouse International Church, the place you go to grow to reach your full potential. Five women with their Pearls and Chuck's on. See what Shirley on the side give a quick testimony about how this ministry is not just four walls, but we bust these walls down to impact this community. 
Amen. You are outstanding. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get out of here. I hope I've said everything I'm supposed to say. 7 o'clock every morning, 7 o'clock prayer line. Please be on the prayer line. 7 a.m. every morning. Please be on the prayer line. If you need information on how to get on the prayer line, see Minister Lolita Davis or see Sister Brenda Basin. They'll give you the information, the call number, and the access code. But everybody should start that day off Sunday, Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. in prayer. Okay, we got to go. Sister Caraway, come here, please. If you would, Pastor Sandra's best friend, if you would close us out in prayer. Wipe, either give her another mic. I need a wipe or another mic, preferably another mic. Give, let them grab you a clean mic. I, I got the antibodies, I got the supernatural, but I don't want to make anybody else sick. Amen. And if you will close us out in a word of prayer, we all standing. And y'all, you know, when you're under the fog, you can joke a lot because you go in peace. When, when you've been free from what other folks think about you, Man, that, I, that's a peaceful place to be in. And I'm not going to ever trade. I, I got to tell you this, this last joke, then I'm going to pray. Yesterday, when I was with Crunch Woman Lee, this lady had the dash, and I couldn't believe another, another lady. She said, I can't stand him. What do you mean? So somebody said, what do you do to you? He always out there helping people. So the lady said, well, what's wrong with that? Well, well he ain't got to always be smiling and stuff when he's doing it. I was like, Kudos, God. I'm now getting criticized for doing too much. Much love, Jesus. I'm not worried, not one hour of what nobody say. There's a mission and a purpose, and we're going to accomplish the mission and the purpose, and broken homes will be brought back together, and no one will be hungry on our watch. No one will be naked on our watch. No one will be homeless on our watch. We're going to solve every problem that the government promised they were going to solve because we got Jesus. Will you pray, please? of this greenhouse church over here, Lord God, in Greens Point area, Lord God, serving and worshiping the people, Lord God, going from door to door, Lord God, just continue to cover them, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we praying for everyone that's up under the sound of my voice, Lord God. You know what they need even before they begin to ask, Lord God. So, Father God, grant it unto them, Lord God. And, Father, just continue to be with us as we go to our various places on today, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, before one, one final, all first-time guests, all first-time guests, Robert Bishop, raise your hand. Come here for a second. I need you to do me a favor. Let all first-time guests follow you to the gas station next door. Line them all up at one pump, and I'll be able to pay for the gas in just a second. So, all first-time guests, they're going to show you that. Your first time guest called, follow up to the gas station, line up at one pump, and then I'll be able to take care of the bill. Amen. Amen. Now, we've, 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 we've prayed. Church is officially over. We'll see you in the morning for prayer. We'll see you next Sunday. Go and share the good news of what Jesus is doing here at the Greenhouse International Church. God bless you real good.